In these times of uncertainty, do we know where the future is headed? Find out on the Revelation 13 podcast. Revelation 13 podcast. I'm your host, Mike Copwood. Uh, this podcast is dedicated to the study of end time prophecy, theories, news, and events related to end time prophecy. Um, and I welcome you to the first uh, episode. Today's episode, we're going to study what does the future hold? What is seems to be the events on the horizon right now? Especially uh now with this financial crisis we're going through in america you know had this podcast started uh, months earlier i probably would have talked about the, fu- the potential coming financial crisis uh, but now we're sort of already in it and i think it can go either one of two ways um, either this could be the major depression and financial ruin for the u.s uh, or we're going to come out of it because it's, because I think it depends on the powers that be behind the scene. Apparently they want to destroy the American dollar. And that may be their main aim for this financial crisis. It definitely seems to be that they want to replace it with a one world currency. Um, but also part of it may be in the, where we may have a quick turnaround or, or, or where it won't get so bad is if they want Obama to do well. Um, they may be able to do more with Obama getting reelected than than just one time trying to change the currency. Um, so that's going to be sort of interesting to see how that pans out. Theoretically, I, uh, just looking at the information, I wouldn't think that the financial crisis is going to turn around anytime soon, but you never know. I mean, people for years have been saying the that the finances and uh, behind uh, behind the scenes and stuff have been controlling our finances uh, of the country, and so it wouldn't be too surprising to see a potential comeback within a relatively short period of time or not. But uh, but those who are Christians, we're looking forward to the rapture. Now there tends to be three schools of thought on that. Uh, there's the pre-trib mid-trib and then post-trib which means at the end he comes um, I lean towards the pre-trib um, I understand there's no a lot of people with, who are post-trib and sometimes mid-trib don't believe that there's the basically the smoking gun evidence for a pre-trib and to me it's more of it's in between the lines of what Jesus talks about you know, be worried that you escape, pray that you're worried that you escape these things. And in the, the first part of Revelation, and it says where he's talking to the Church of Philadelphia, which many believe is a representation of the different churches' age, ages in Philadelphia and Laodicea, are the last two. And he tells them, um, you, you will escape the time of testing that comes upon the earth, or you will, I will keep you from the time of testing. Uh, that will become upon the earth. But I think the little in between the lines, messages like that, point to a, a, a pre trib rapture. I could be wrong. I'm not dogmatic about it. Uh, it might be that it may be more towards the middle, you know, where there's some where we sort of start the tribulation, the first seven years are relatively peaceful. Or, you know, we, we go through stuff like we're going now, financial crisis, you know, maybe disasters of some sort. And then, but we, we haven't hit the point. But when the, about the time that the Antichrist rises, though, it would be the time of, of uh, the rapture. 
but you know to each his own um, you know this is to some people it's a major point of contention I'm not I love my brothers who are post-trib or mid-trib as much as I do the pre-tribbers and you know it's not a point of salvation or faith it's just a matter of of opinion I personally will uh, I believe in hope and that's the hope I want is to not be here for that but if if not you know then so be it God will take care of me Jesus will take care of me it's not a problem um, the rise of the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast is the other main events that we're looking for that would follow or be in that same time period. Um, right now, just it seems the financial crisis seems to be that they're going towards socialism. They're trying to get a world control of, of finances, decreasing America's uh, uh, influence in the financial markets. That's all going down right now, um, which probably will lead to, uh, well, if nothing else, a one world currency, which they probably eventually will lead to the mark of the beast. Um, it's coming. They've got the RFID technology, where it can put radio chips in you for scanners. They've also got it where they can make it in an invisible ink and make the, R, uh, the RFID that way. Um, so there doesn't actually have to be a visible mark or it can be an implanted microchip. There are several ways that this could go about. But they're definitely moving towards that. I think during the Bush administration they required that um, livestock animals have these chips in them. Um, for, all, for all livestock animals, the people who deal in them. Uh, which basically looks like it's just a test run for humans. Uh, the practicality of it, or at the very least, getting people used to uh, implantation of uh, chips. Um, another, the next events or uh, events that could occur is definitely a war in the Middle East, and that seems to be the most pressing right now. Um, the reality is, we have a problem with Iran, and Israel has a problem with Iran, and un, uh, f uh, a country. Who's fanatic? Who fanat who's fanatical? Islam fanatical with nuclear weapons is without a doubt a recipe for disaster. The problem is the rest of the world doesn't sort of see it that way. Uh, Russia has no problem supporting and helping these Middle East nations, uh, Iran and uh, Iran, develop its nuclear weapons technology. Thing is, Israel's not going to sit around and let it happen. Uh, I know over the past, before the election of Benjamin Netanyahu, they had uh, prime ministers that were trying hard for peace, and they were willing to give up, seemed to be just about willing to give up just about anything to achieve peace. Um, and they obviously didn't seem too interested in going to war with Iran, although it, I heard it seemed that they potentially were, because even the most liberal over there understands the fact that the, that the Arabs, if given a chance, will overrun them and drive them out, if not, if not slaughter and kill them. Uh, so even the more uh, liberal of their party understands understands the fact that they have to do something about Iran. But I don't think the people in power before Benjamin Netanyahu had the will to do it. For a little while, it looked like they may have, but apparently Bush told them that he would not give them support for an attack against Iran like they had done against Saddam Hussein in the 80s. Uh, you know, they were condemned for that, but it was a good thing that they did go in and take out Saddam Hussein's nuclear uh, facilities and stopped him from getting a nuclear bomb. Um, and they apparently that's what they need, that they're planning to do with Iran. The only negative there is, is that I don't think this time they'll get a, a non-reaction like they got from Iraq. Um, because Iran is so defiant and their leaders are wanting chaos they believe that their Mahdi will come with chaos and that, which is one of the reasons why they want the nuclear bomb and I've heard that there's a thought that